Now we've learnt about long grain rice, this time we're moving on to medium and short grain rice and you can see clearly the difference. The method of cooking starts the same as it does with long grain rice but the end result is the absolute opposite. Not fluffy and separate, but moist and creamy. This is one of the best varieties for making Italian risottos. It's a medium grain rice called Arborio. And first of all, I'm going to make a classic recipe called risotto milanese. The spice traditionally used in risotto milanese is called saffron. It's actually the dried stamens of a variety of autumn crocus. It adds aroma and a bright yellow colour. Some recipes call for the saffron to be soaked, but for this one I'm crushing it. Only half a teaspoon because it's pungent and strong. In this heavy base saucepan I have 60 grams of melted butter. Add the saffron to the butter and cook it gently for a minute to draw out the flavour. Then add a medium onion and let it cook gently for 10 minutes without colouring. Here I've got 1.2 litres of hot chicken stock. And now I'm going to pour 100 ml of dry white wine into the mortar to soak up any remnants of saffron. The arborio rice is measured up to 350 ml level in this jug. Pour the rice into the pan and give it a good stir for about a minute or so just to coat the grains with the buttery juices. Then add the white wine and a rounded teaspoon of salt. Then stir gently until all the liquid has been absorbed. Then start by adding one ladle full of simmering stock Give it a stir and again let it simmer till absorbed. When all of the stock has been absorbed but the rice is still moist, add another ladle full of stock. Continue adding the stock in this way and unlike long grain rice, the stirring is what is encouraging the rice to release its creaminess. Towards the end of the cooking, the risotto will need more gentle stirring to stop it sticking to the base of the pan. The whole process will take about 25 to 30 minutes. At the end, you should have a risotto which is creamy and just a little tiny bit soupy, but the grains of rice will still have a firm bite. As soon as that's happened, remove it from the heat and stir in 50 grams more butter and four heaped tablespoons of freshly grated parmesan. Then cover with a tea towel and leave it to stand for five minutes. Finally stir in some freshly milled pepper Then serve in a hot bowl and sprinkle with lots more parmesan. That is well worth all the time it takes. But if you want a simpler version, in Liguria in Italy, they make an oven baked risotto. The very best wild mushrooms in the world are these, which come from Liguria. They're called porcini, and they're dried, which concentrates their wonderful flavour.
So we begin this with 10 grams of dried porcini. And they need 570 mils of boiling water to soak for about half an hour. After that, place a piece of kitchen paper in a sieve over a jug and strain the mushroom juice, which now has lots of flavour and will be used in the risotto. Squeeze any remaining juice from the porcini and put them to one side. What I've already prepared here is a medium onion chopped small and 225 grams of fresh dark gilled mushrooms, which I've cut into chunks like this. Then the porcini is finely chopped. In my medium saucepan here, I've got 60 grams of melted butter. First of all, add the onion, give it a stir, and leave to cook gently for five minutes. Then add the fresh mushrooms, then the porcini mushrooms, give everything another good stir, and continue to cook for 20 minutes. Once the mushrooms and onions have softened, add 175 mils of arborio rice. Stir so the grains get a good coating of the buttery juices. Then measure 150 mils of this, which is a dry fortified wine from Madeira. Or you could use dry sherry. Add that to the pan along with the mushroom stock a teaspoon of salt and some freshly milled black pepper. Now give it all a stir and bring it up to simmering point. Take a dish that has been preheated in the oven and pour in the risotto. I'm using a square dish, but an oval one will do. Just make sure it's at least 1.5 litre capacity. Give it a quick stir, then transfer it to the oven without covering, 150 degrees centigrade, gas mark two, and time it for 20 minutes. Then slide the dish out Add two heaped tablespoons of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano, which is the very best Parmesan cheese. Stir it gently with a wooden spoon, turning the grains over. Then put it back in the oven for 15 minutes. And here is the finished risotto. I'm going to cover it with a cloth and leave it for five minutes. Then serve it in hot bowls and sprinkle this time with finely paired shavings of parmesan. Just to show you a little taster of what's to come, Arborio makes a lovely rice salad, dressed with a homemade basil pesto. And I'll be showing you how to make homemade pesto in our next lesson. Now a proper old-fashioned rice pudding, which chefs can never make, but mothers always did. And this is how my mother made it. This is 175 mils of short grain pudding rice. And here I have an old-fashioned enamel baking dish with a 1.4 litre capacity. This has been generously buttered. Pour the pudding rice into the baking dish, then sprinkle it with 40 grams of sugar. In the jug here, I've got 850 mils of whole milk. Add that to the dish. Then just to enrich it, 
a 410 ml can of evaporated milk. Give it a stir and then grate a whole nutmeg over the surface. Finally, dot it all over with 25 grams of butter. It goes into a slow oven, 150 degrees centigrade, gas mark two, for a total of two and a quarter hours. But use a timer and give the dish a good stir after 45 minutes. Then leave it to cook for the rest of the time Don't forget to share out all that lovely caramelised skin. And it has to be said that rice pudding is actually equally good served cold. <laughs>